Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. And welcome back to my shop. So I think I've got an easy one for us today. Mrs. FPF asked if I could make her a masa spreader. And she wants to use it later on today, like to make dinner tonight. I mention that because it's an important detail, because this is not something I would normally design in 3D print. Not because it's a kitchen tool. I mean, that's, that's just fine. Uh, but it's, it's readily available. We could just buy one. It's not readily available locally though. Like it's not the type of thing you could just walk into the grocery store and buy. It's not in that you're ordering and waiting for it to come. And again, she wants to use it today. So let's take a crack at it. Let's start with looking at the one that is available for sale on Amazon, see what information we can get from that. And we'll also take a look and see what other ones might be available out there that we could just print. All right, so if you search for Masa Spreader on Amazon, this is the top hit and it looks pretty straightforward and simple. And from discussing this with Mrs. FPF, uh, it's basically just kind of almost like a joint compound knife or a plaster knife with these eighth inch guides here on the sides. And I appreciate that they actually call out the, the depth of these because otherwise we would be guessing. And I imagine that is probably pretty important to getting the right uh, thickness of masa as you are spreading it with this tool. So again, we could order this online. It's $9.99. It's not even particularly expensive. It's just not going to be here on time. So I took a look on Thingiverse. This is the first one that came up in my search. And this one looks kind of interesting. It looks very similar to the design of the one on Amazon, uh, but the sides look a lot higher. Like the guides here, that looks like a lot taller than one eighth inch. Either that or this whole thing is just a lot smaller. I also don't think this is gonna print too clean because of all the curved surfaces. So it looks like there's enough flat surface down here for this guy to stick to the bed, presuming we, we printed it kind of standing up like that. Um, oh, you know what? And I just noticed actually, I didn't see this before. This side is different than this side. So actually if we printed this side down on the bed, which it's hard to spin it that way here in the preview for some reason, yeah, it just does not want to spin that way. But presumably if we printed it on this edge, that would probably work. That's the part of the, the print here that would be a really bad overhang if we were to print this side, that curved surface, but the handle's still not going to print cleanly. It's not going to print cleanly here and it's not gonna print cleanly up here where it transitions back into uh, the handle attaching to the base. This is the other one that came up. And this one is interesting because it looks like they broke it up into several different pieces so that it could print without supports, which I applaud. I mean, I get it, that's smart to do. However, I think it's gonna be pretty weak at that joint. I don't know, I, I'm guessing maybe it's just kind of pushed into place. Maybe it's a tight fit. Uh, if it's just a tight fit, because of the way that this gets used, I would think it's gonna work its way loose. Uh, they've got the guides running down the long face instead of the short face. So you're gonna be pushing down with this side. So that's not gonna come out, but this back I would think is gonna wanna come out as you're using it. I guess you could glue it, but then you're waiting for the glue to dry. So it kind of defeats the purpose. You may as well just order one. And then lastly, there's this one on Maker World. And this one does look kind of neat. I like the way that there's sort of these carved out pockets. It just, it just looks neat. Now, if we open up the 3D preview, let's see, can we change the color? Yeah, that is a lot easier to see. So the handle comes up at an angle and I don't think that is to make it printable. I think that is, I think that is to ease the use of it. But that said, I've never used one of these and none of the commercially available ones seem to have an angled handle like this. So I'm a little nervous that that might actually make it more difficult to use. And Mrs. FPF has seen the one on Amazon. So I'm probably going to stick to more of that traditional design. The other thing is this one is still not going to print without supports. In fact, if we close this and go back, yeah, you can see here, we'll make this picture bigger. Yeah. You can see that overhang there. And I don't know if, if this person printed this with supports on or not, but yeah, clearly it's not too happy up here. So even if that was done with supports, it didn't print very cleanly. The handle on this one also looks really thin. If we look at this view, the handle itself just looks too thin. Uh, like it doesn't look like it's comfortable to use. And I don't know why there's a bore through it. That would make sense if this was injection molded. I wouldn't design it that way for 3D printing because this is already, per you know what, honestly, this is probably a throwaway item, but you're definitely never gonna get it clean with a bore all the way through the, uh, the handle. All right, I'm gonna take a crack at drawing my own. I'm gonna try and stick to the original commercially available design, but more or less optimize it for 3D printing. And what I mean by that is, I'm gonna try and make it that the whole thing can be printed with all clean faces without supports, because the any of the surfaces that have supports are not gonna be very smooth at all, which is not great for a tool like this. It's gonna waste material, but more importantly, it's gonna take a lot longer to print. Because again, the goal here is for her to actually be able to use this today. So 
I'm gonna work on drawing and I will bring you guys back. All right, and here is the design that I came up with for this. And again, the number one goal was to optimize this design for 3D printing, uh, to get nice, clean, smooth faces everywhere and for this to print without supports. So I started with the, you know, the business end of this, the part that's actually gonna do the work, uh, which is this large flat underside face and these guide rails on the side. And I don't know exactly what the dimensions are of the one on Amazon. It did list uh, length and width dimensions. You never know if those include the packaging or not, but it seemed to make sense when I plugged them in. So I stuck with those and the height of the guide rails is exactly one eighth inch. I think that's the most important dimension because that's what sort of sets the thickness of the, like the paste that you're putting down. But I guess we'll see when we try it. The sides here are just plain flat faces and that's because we can print this guy on either side. Uh, so one of these faces will be the one that is attached uh, to the bed. And the, the angles here, I mean, obviously the one, you know, gravity is gonna be on our side for, if we, if we print this side down on the bed, this side is gonna print no problem. I tried to get to maximize the width of the handle, but also uh, maximize the amount of angle that we have here so that this prints cleanly without supports. I'm probably pushing it a bit. I don't remember, I did measure it. I don't remember exactly what angle I'm at. It's clearly not 45 degrees. It's definitely steeper than that. I guess we'll see. In my experience, generally speaking, particularly with PLA, if you have enough cooling, we should be able to achieve that much of an angle without support. So I'm, I'm, there's, there's gonna be no supports turned on for this print. Uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Hopefully it at least comes out clean enough for her to use because I don't think we're gonna have time to print a second one. I did get a little cute here and just put masa on it. I think these letters are sunk down half a millimeter. It should be enough just for it to show up. And I made the handle nice and thick. I found things like this that you use with your hands. Um, it's, it's very easy to make the handle too narrow. And then you go to use it and you can grip it okay, but it's very uncomfortable to use for any amount of time. And particularly in this case, you're gonna have to be putting a fair amount of force uh, down on this uh, to spread the masa. At least that's my guess. All right, I'm going to slice this and print it and I will bring you guys back. All right, our print is complete and came out really nice. It is uh, really, really smooth on the side. So it printed, yeah, that's the side that was on the bed. And this side down here is really, really smooth. This side, I can just start to feel a little bit of rough patches. I can't really see it, but I can feel it kind of right there. It probably, maybe that's where it started the line because it's smoother on this side, but it's a little bit rough right there. So I don't think we could have pushed that angle any further and still gotten a you know reasonably clean surface. But uh, text came out nice. Uh, our angle going back up to the rise looks really good. Like that came out nice and clean. We probably could have pushed, again, let's see. This is, yeah, this is the bed side. So yeah, this would have been our side here where uh, it had that overhang. We probably could have pushed that further because that is really, really clean. Like I actually can't tell that without looking at um, which side has the texture from the build plate, I actually can't tell uh, which side is which. So, all right, let me see if Mrs. FPF is ready because I would really like to see if this thing actually works. All right, so presumably we start with just putting masa on there. Yeah, it looks like it's working. Looks like, uh, I don't know, I wonder if this would be easier if this was like thinner. Let's try thinning this out a little bit. Ooh, that looks good. Looks like it's spread it pretty even. Can I try? Definitely fun to play with, it's like Play-Doh. Yeah, it seems to be doing the business. 
All right, guys. Well, that worked out really well. I don't think there's anything to change on this. I think this is both version one and final version for once. The one thing I was worried about was this bevel on the edge. I didn't know how that was going to sort of affect the ability to uh, you know, control the, the thickness of the material that you're putting down because it's a full eighth inch from this face to this edge. But the idea is that you can tip this and control how thick the material you're putting on is, or you can just run it flat on both edges and get a full uh, eighth inch thick of material. But no, it worked out really well. I don't know if we're gonna reuse this or not. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a dollar's worth of PLA. I could certainly just print another one next time we want to, uh, to spread masa for tamales, which is probably not gonna be for another year. But yeah, let me know down in the comments. What, what do you guys think? What would you do? I mean, there's clearly enough moisture in the masa that uh, we're probably getting some there in, the, in sort of just the pores of this print. I mean, that looks like a solid surface to me, but I know if we looked at that under the microscope, we'd see all kinds of little holes uh, that material was getting into. Now that said, I bet you if I rinsed this off, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But again, you know, let me know down in the comments. Would you reuse this? Would you just print another one? Should I just order the one off of Amazon? Let me know what you think. Guys, as always, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me for this week's design and print. This was a fun little challenge to see if we could come up with our own design for one of these that not only worked, but was also 3D printable without any supports and clean surfaces everywhere. And I think we achieved that. I'm, I'm really happy with how everything came out on this. If this is by chance your first time here on the channel, this is all we do. It's all functional prints. It's no, you know, multicolored doodads of the week, like minifigs and stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it's not what we do here on this channel. So if you like that sort of thing, check out some of the other videos on the channel. And if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday. <laughs>